Hi everyone, C Chronicles here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're joining us here for the very first time, we do a lot of fragrance reviews on this channel, guys. I post four to five fragrance reviews weekly on this channel. However, I do have other content, you know, of things that are of interest to me on this channel as well. So if that sounds like something that interests you guys, please do consider joining this family by subscribing. I'd appreciate you becoming part of the family. And to my returning subbies, thank you so much, guys for the continued support i don't take that for granted at all thank you for always supporting this channel now welcome to a top 20 latafa favorites in my collection this is a video request by heather fear she wrote in my comment section could you do a top favorites from your Latafa collection? Okay, like a top favorites Latafas within your collection. Uh, and she is not the only one who's been asking me to do a video of this sort. I have been putting it, you know, aside at the back banner, that kind of thing. Uh, because Latafa is always making perfumes. And I kept on saying, okay, I'm going to buy this one and then I'll do the video. I'll buy this one and do, uh, you know, the video. So anyway, today I've got 20 Latafas in front of me. Uh, I am going to feature them in accordance to how I rate them so it's going to be from, from 20 going to number one I'm going to give you a brief explanation as to why I've put it at number whatever the number is and why I like so the it. very first one uh, in this list is going to be Latafa Collard uh, let me just spray it here I don't know why this fragrance is not popular maybe it was a limited edition I don't know okay so I'm going to spray it here and then we can sniff it I don't reach out for this one a lot simply because it's super sweet even though it does have a touch of sourness there but it is mostly the sweetness that you're gonna get there quite rosy as well in the same vein as uh carolina herrera is very good girl not exactly identical but i would say if you love that one you're probably going to love this one i wear this one mostly in winter and that is the reason why i put it at number 20 because it's not a fragrance i am willing to maybe let go of but it's not a fragrance that i reach out for the most so sitting at number 20 is latafa's colored Number 19 is going to be Khalta Special Blend of Latafa. This is sitting on number 19 because it is an acquired kind of fragrance. If you are so much into the Middle Eastern fragrances, you're not going to have a problem with this. This to me is Middle Eastern, but not too much. It's a bit guarded as opposed to some of the ones that they have done that are heavy in spices. I get a sweet unisex leaning scent here, a bit powdery, a bit rosy, spicy as well, fruity and warm. And of course that Middle Eastern element there, but without pushing it too much. This I'd kept within the same fragrance family as MFK's Oud Satin Mood. So if you like that kind of fragrance, you're probably going to like this one. So number 19 is going to be Khalta Special Blend by Latafa, a unisex fragrance. Sitting on number 18 is Mask Salama. You need this mask in your life if you don't have it already. I'm not sure of the availability of this fragrance because I bought mine a long time ago. But this is an easy reach, kind of soapy, creamy, sweet, bubblegummy, you know, kind of mask. And this has a this has a lingering effect to it. So it's not your ordinary mask. By this, I mean some musks wear better when you layer them with other fragrances. But this is a fragrance that's enough on its own in as much as it's musky it is creamy it has like a soapiness to it and it's a musk that is not boring it is one that i can class as genderless as well with the lasting power to match so sitting at my number 18 is musk salama this is confidential private gold a dupe of Tiziana Terenzi's Kirke. If you love tropical, fruity fragrances, very sweet, that sort of thing, you know, passion fruit especially, then you are going to love this one. And I have it in my collection for that reason as well. This is not light. This can cross over to any season because it is like a thick offering of, you know, the fruits that you get here. Sticky sweet as well. So sitting at number 17 is going to be Confidential Private Gold. Number 16 is going to be Naal Noble Sophia. Now this fragrance, guys, is zesty. Very Western leaning here. I did say in my previous video that this one gives me a little bit of a the Frenchy feel. You know, not pushing it. It's not duping that fragrance. It's not duping a uh, girl in the Frenchy. But it just gives me like uh, wafts off the Frenchy. You know, where you get that 
bitter, sweet, sour, bitter, zesty feel of the orange. So this is the reason why I have it. The bottle may seem, you know, a bit intimidating, but that is just what it is. An easy reach, western leaning citrus and sitting on number 16 is our noble Sophia. Now, next up, guys, on number 15 is Yara. And remember, I love all these fragrances, but all of them couldn't be number one. So I am just putting them in accordance to how I use them and how often I use them. Yara is here, guys. It's a creamy, sweet guma. Let me just spray Yara on my arm, okay? Yara ages better with time. With time, there is an underlying sourness that you get from the mixture of the fruits that you get here. And the sourness kind of leans towards like a boozy feel. I thought I'd cracked this fragrance until I purchased uh, Pepper Jeans for her. And when I smelled Pepper Jeans for her, I was like, wait a minute, this is Yara, okay? So this is a fragrance that's going to give you a lot of different versions of itself, but it's going to keep that creaminess, that strawberry feel, that fruity feel, and then a light booziness the longer you keep it in your collection. So yes, it's here on number 15, guys, because it's still one of my favorites from Latafa. On my number 14 is going to be Aura. I'm just going to spray it on, you know, this tester paper. And I love Aura, guys. It's a Baccarat Rouge 540 uh, dupe and a good one at that, but it's been overly done. Almost every dupe company has weighed in on this. Most of the Middle Eastern fragrance companies have, you know, weighed in on this Baccarat Rouge craze. So just because of that, you know, I put it at number 14, but it's here because it will remain my favorite. This translates the DNA perfectly and this interprets it better than Anna Abiyad Rouge does because the same house, Latafa, have got another Baccarat Rouge 540 dupe called Anna Abiyad Rouge. Uh, and I have since, you know, finished that one because it is way lighter than this one. So sitting at my number 14 most favorite from Latafa is going to be Aura. The next fragrance, guys, is from the Latafa Pride uh, collection. Let me see if I can just read out the notes for you here. This is Mahajan Gold. I featured Mahajan Silver in our last, uh, in one of the videos I did recently. So this is Mahajan Gold, and I'm going to read the notes off here. Now, Mahajan Gold is listed as having lavender and pepper, also has incense, tuberose, and jasmine, then caramel, cedarwood, ember, and cashmere. But I'm going to tell you what I think of this fragrance. Guys, in a nutshell, Mahajan Gold just feels like you went into the field full of sugarcane, squeezed some sugar off that one, mixed it with caramel, a touch of ember and cashmere. That is what I get here. Very sweet sugarcane feel of a fragrance. Not bad. Very easy reach. I wish you could see... Uh, where mine is at let me see if I can turn it around and maybe you could you can see oh no all you're gonna see is my shoes okay that's where mine is all right that's where mine is because this is just an easy reach fragrance so I personally wouldn't mind about the notes here whether Latafa decided to just amp up the notes and all that I honestly don't get any lavender here uh, nor do I get any florals if you will unfortunately I don't know what it's a dupe of but if I come across a, what it is a dupe of I will definitely bring it here so it's on my number 13 is Mahashan gold on the number 12 position guys is this one okay Lothre Oud this is a new addition to my collection but uh, let me just show you the dent I haven't had this fragrance for more than two months and this is where it where it's at okay so that might seem like a little if you uh don't have a lot of fragrances but with the collection i have uh, this is a, a decent dent okay Lothre Oud let us just get another uh, tester paper here and I'm going to spray it but I know exactly how it smells like just going to spray it here just to remind ourselves this has a middle eastern touch no doubt but it doesn't push the boundaries what you're going to get here is a smokiness of course there is a medicinal thing here that might be a put off for some but what you're going to get the most here is like a smoky incense -y vanilla not too smoky you know I you I've always wanted to declutter my Amir Al Oud intense I still haven't but if anything I would say this fragrance is more wearable to me than my Amir Al Oud intense where I get into a scent bubble of smoke 
I don't get that with this one. This one gives you brown sugar, you know, like a trickle feel, a touch of uh, vanilla as well. And of course that light incense. So this is why it's here, guys. This is Latafa Lothre Oud sitting on my number 12. Remember guys, we are rating these, you know, from the ones I reach out for the most to the most, most favorite. So I decided to choose 20 so that you can have a lot, you know, of choices. Didn't just want to come and say, oh, these are my top five Latafas and then leave it at that. Sitting on number 11 is going to be Latafa Mocha Silky Rose. This top 20 video I pre-recorded about a month ago and I hadn't received this fragrance. Now that I have it, I didn't want to redo the video again and I'm just going to give it its shine here and now. I had to remove one fragrance from this list with a heavy heart and, re and replace it with Moha Silky Rose. This is a, a Mimosa Freesia Powdery Soapy Beautiful Scent. The review for this one is coming in a few days guys in case you wanted to know more about it but I just had to give it its crown and put it on my number 11. So guys please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We are midway now just make sure uh, you check the button make sure the gray you know button turns red and then you are part of the family i would very much appreciate if you joined the family now we are on the top 10 these are my creme de la creme okay of course top three is going to be the best but these to me are fragrances that if they finished i'm going to have to repurchase if they were the only ones left within my collection i would have no problem these are fragrances that i wouldn't miss the rest if i just had them and i'm talking about from just latafa not all my fragrance collection Sitting at number 10 is going to be a deep let me just spray it here i get a citrus body here everything in here is sitting on a citrus body however this fragrance doesn't list citrus okay as a note this one has a touch of wood and then it has a touch of patchouli and then it has a touch of incense and it has some spices there beautiful citrus guys okay this is not the same as this Okay, this gives me outright citrus, zesty orange rind, uh, orange zesty juice, that kind of thing. Now, this on the other hand, it has a tang in there. There is some something, a spice or whatever it is that they've put there that just gives this one a tang. So it's going to be a citrus body fragrance that will give you a pleasant surprise don't sit on a deep guys i'm not sure of the availability this is my second bottle the first one i bought in 2019 i cannot do without this fragrance i actually wish there was smell -a vision where you could smell this fragrance okay may not be for everyone but i don't see anybody having a problem with this fragrance guys i honestly don't anyway enough said so sitting at number 10 is a deep okay this is a tropical fragrance it's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. It's a juicy, fruity, fizzy, uh, raspberry mixing with a toffee and a caramel feel. This gives me sunny vibes. It's a perfect summer scent. And why I have it here in as much as it's fairly new is it's a DNA that is not the same as Khalad. And I did keep this one as a tropical scent, but these two fragrances do not translate the same in as much as they're tropical this is sticky this is one i would wear in winter mostly because it can be stuffy it can be sticky but it smells so good and if you want compliments obviously you're going to get tons of compliments here on the other hand guys is a different type of tropical this comes across as sweet and fizzy you know ideal for the summer as though you're drinking a fruit ju juice but it's not the fruit sort of fruit juice that will leave you know you clearing your throat if you will as a mental shortcut where you drink something so syrupy sweet and it leaves like uh <clears throat> where you must continuously clear your throat this comes across as sweet but with enough sweetness and it has that toffee guys and of course it also has um the granadilla and all that and everything in here just interprets as summary and mood lifting number eight is going to be nebras simply because this is a linear scent i've raved and raved about this fragrance but why it didn't make my top three is because it gives me chocolate 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 and buried berries so this is a fragrance that 
in a nutshell just to do a review of this fragrance all you have to say is guys if you love chocolate go and buy this one have a nice day so that is the only reason why it's sitting on my number eight okay it's a different enough fragrance but it is very linear it is a fragrance that for some may come across as dull and boring especially if you prefer you know your fragrance dna to have like layers to it this is going to give you chocolate chocolate and more chocolate so i decided to put nick brass on my number eight for that reason now on my number seven guys is a spicy boozy woodsy scent this one doesn't is not listed as boozy i'm trying to get a, a, a tester a tester paper here so that we can just remind ourselves of this one okay so this is mora um okay mora and it's marketed unisex so let me just spray it on this tester paper i get a booziness from this fragrance i get a a tobacco we feel maybe a bit of some leather but mental shortcut for you if you wanted to add this fragrance to your collection is it is a very unique scent there is a spiciness here woodsiness here earthiness here and that booze which hasn't been listed as a note um but above all this fragrance to a lot of people is going to come across as though it's got licorice okay so it feels as though it's got a licorice note there wafts of coca-cola but not necessarily but those wafts of coca-cola are not going to be smelt as that by everybody some are just gonna smell that part that i'm saying feels like coca-cola as maybe cough syrup okay so if you can imagine uh, a dark thick cough syrup that sweetness that you get there maybe if you just put your nose on that uh cough syrup okay but of course this is not cough syrup and then imagine a licorice there and then imagine some spices there it's a unique scent overall. if you love the dna you can wear this all year round it's it's not that big of a deal okay so yes it is on my number seven a la tafas mohra this is higher it's western leaning it has a combination of white florals and of course that rose higher to me is slightly sweet but why i say is the most beautiful floral to me is this is a floral that doesn't push it um i can see if you're a person who loves your very your sense are very light saying this is headache inducing to me this is not this doesn't come across as a floral like gucci bloom where it's flowers flowers and more flowers they have added a champagne note in here that makes it so effervescent and exciting and and it is one fragrance that is perfect for both young and old so it is a you know a fragrance that will please across the board and i like it for that it's a classy floral feminine scent pushing over to femme fatale if you will so yes this to me is my ideal scent um but let me just say this quickly this fragrance may come across as not unique not interesting to some because there are fragrances that have been done in this way and i i can understand that but i'm just saying to me it is just a perfect floral so sitting on our number six guys of my most favorite latafas is higher so guys we're left with only five okay and uh these are fragrances that i feel if you just went and bought these uh they wouldn't disappoint sitting on number five is gonna be camera camera guys is a sweet and sour um concoction it has a cinnamon forward dna so you've got to love cinnamon for you to love this it has tons of spices as well it's going to come across as woodsy to some christmasy to some apple pie feel to some gingerbread feel to some you know even hot cross buns kind of feel to some it is unisex you know in nature but do take note it is very aromatic as well so it that can be either good or bad for some but it is a beautifully well-rounded fragrance in terms of presentation um a fragrance that i feel is more winter and cool weather appropriate but if you can do this kind of dna then it is going to be a fragrance that you can wear anytime any season so absolutely one that i would recommend the Latafa camera next up guys is this one because of the uniqueness of betty al oud amethyst i tried the regular oud for glory betty al oud and that one was a bit too much for me but i used up the bottle guys these fragrances if i didn't say are not similar to each other you could literally pick four from this list and they won't smell the same this this was another deciding factor for me to put these fragrances here this is a unisex fragrance it's got a double dose of rose okay and 
some spiciness there aromaticness there it has a pink pepper here but it could also very well have black pepper it has a latexy rubbery feel that some people may be put off by but i'm gonna say that's exactly what i like about it so that latexy accord working with the spiciness there a touch of woods a touch of sweetness a touch of uh, powderiness some aromaticness there beautiful scent profile overall is exactly why i love this fragrance and weirdly enough, I'm going to say this to you, and I know some of you are going to laugh at this, okay? If you're into perfumes like myself, you will know what I mean. This fragrance, if you're wondering the differences between this one and the Betty Al Oud, the Amethyst smells purple. Let me tell you what I mean. As a fragrance fanatic, there is something in your mind that gives a mental shortcut. When you see a purple bottle or you see a fragrance with a purple juice, there is that mental shortcut, that olfactory expectation that it's going to have have a purple floral shypre i get this from here, this fragrance by purple shypre i'm gonna say um i'm talking about having a feel of iris maybe violets maybe hyacinth and no i'm not saying the notes are there but i'm just saying mental shortcut if you are wondering okay what's the difference between the black one and this one this has a purple appeal to it although of course let's stick to the notes that i told you about and what i think of it so yes definitely guys on my number four we Without any doubt is Betty Al Oud Amethyst. On my number three and this was hot, right? I put on some gold on my number three simply because I don't get a good lasting power from this. But this can quickly go to my number one if it macerates to what I want it to be. I get a fragrance that I have to reapply every five hours or so. I get a fragrance I have to douse myself in because this is a soft presentation. But why it's on my number three is it's an ideal scent that I can use over and over, that I can repurchase, that I can have backups of without this fragrance you know uh annoying me because everything in here is subtle it's creamy it's fluffy it has faint citruses some marshmallow there soft feminine you know beautiful delicate candy feel of a fragrance so i just had to put it here because of the lasting power but of course if this one changes this is probably going to switch uh with my number one or with my number two to be the best latafa i have ever owned so sitting at number three is ansem gold now, sitting at number two, guys, is Latafa Sondos. This is at number two because this is a fragrance that wowed me offset. This is not a fragrance that I had to condition myself to love. This is the most perfumey, perfumist perfume made by Latafa. And above all, it is gourmand with that caramel in the lead. It's going to give you ultra feminine classiness there and also have it a mass appeal without being boring the performance as well in this is beastly so there was nothing guys to fold with latafa sondos and for that reason it is sitting at my number two now we are at number one and i'm pretty sure you're wondering which one is going to be number one now this to me was a no-brainer because this is a fragrance that's showing me that Latafa is going in a direction where they don't feel they need, you know, to be discreet. Okay, this is not covert, not in terms of bottle, but in terms of the juice. So number one of my most favorites, top 20, but sitting at number one is going to be Latafa Nashi. The reason why this is on my number one is not because it's a Nishani Ani dupe. It is because it is a composition that is well made. It is a composition that Latafa did not choose to throw in some elements there and twist it up so that, you know, you smell it and you kind of have to like go through the chow and everything to decipher what it's trying to say. This is a fruity, elegant, spicy, aromatic scent with a touch of creaminess. It doesn't claim to have cream as a note, but there are wafts of some underlying creaminess that is there. Very versatile, easy to like, most beautiful fizzy ginger I have ever smelled in this fragrance. I am saying this based off of my experience with this fragrance. So that ginger is is mixing with a beautiful blackberry making this one a sophisticated 
beautiful unisex scent classy ceo boss lady that type of thing i will excuse this one for not having a beastly performance because i'm biased towards it and it hasn't set this is a fragrance i've had for barely two weeks so i'm going to excuse it for that if it completely falls flat in performance then i'm going to come and tell you guys about it but for now i still get about four to five hours of course dowsing myself in it uh, but what i get for those four to five hours is just a gorgeous scent bubble so yes guys number one without a doubt on my most favorite latafas for now is going to be nasheet and nishani ani dupe so that's a wrap guys that concludes this video of the top 20 most favorite latafas in my collection um let me know what you think do you have favorites amongst these favorites i would love to know your favorites too i will update this list maybe in six eight months time because latafa is always making fragrances thank you so much for joining me today i hope you have subscribed guys if you haven't why not also turn on post notifications that way you get to be notified anytime i upload a video like like and share this video and most importantly guys remember that smelling good is a form of good manners cheers